Hello and welcome back to another video. Luis from tradeoptionswithme.com here. In this video you will learn everything you need to know about covered calls. A very simple yet very effective options trading strategy. Let me start by presenting the payoff diagram of a covered call. As you can see on this payoff diagram, a covered call is a slightly bullish to neutral trading strategy. To set up a covered call strategy, you need to buy 100 shares of the underlying asset stock for every call option that you sell on it. So if you sell one call option, you need to buy 100 shares of the underlying stock. The red cross is the strike price of the short call and the green cross is the underlying assets trading price. Right below that you can see the break even point. The max profit is achieved if the underlying assets price rises up or above the strike price of the short call. If the underlying assets price falls, the covered call will end with a loss. This means a covered call is a defined profit and undefined risk strategy. Or theoretically it's not an undefined risk strategy because the stock's price can't go below zero but it's still a pretty big loss if the stock goes all the way down to zero. Now let me move on to how to calculate the profit and loss of a covered call. To calculate the max profit you need to add the strike price of the short call to the premium collected by the short call and from that you subtract the underlying trading price when entering the long stock position. The break even point can be calculated by subtracting the premium received by selling the call option from the underlying purchase price. To clarify this let me present you a short example. Let's say you put on a covered call position by buying 100 shares of the underlying stock at $100 and you sell one call option with a strike price of $105 for $2. This means the max profit of this covered call is $2, which is the premium received, plus the strike price, which is $105, minus $100, which is the price you paid for each on share of the underlying stock. This means the max profit is $7 per share. As this example was with 100 shares, this would be $700. Now let me show you how to calculate the break even point of this position real fast. You simply subtract $2, which is the premium received, from $100, which is $98. So this position breaks even if the stock price drops down below to $98. Now let me move on to when to trade a covered call. To make this as clear as possible, I want to compare the payoff diagram of a covered call to that of a long stock position. So the payoff diagram at the top is that of a covered call and the one below that is the payoff diagram of a long stock position. So as you can see with this blue line, the break even point of the long stock position would end with a profit for the covered call position. In fact, if the stock's price will rise slightly or fall, a covered call will always outperform a long stock position. However, if the stock price rises a lot, a long stock position would be better. This means if you expect the underlying assets price to skyrocket, you should not put on a covered call. However, if you're neutral to slightly bullish, a covered call position would be beneficial. There are two ways to put on a covered call position. Either you put it on as a completely new position where you buy stock and sell the covered call or you simply sell the call option against a stock that you already own. This means covered calls can be done on already existing stock positions. But once again, if you are very bullish on your current stock position, you should likely not put a covered call on it. Next up, let us compare in the money versus at the money versus out of the money covered calls. 
If the strike price of the short call is below the underlying asset's trading price, it is considered in the money. If it is right at or near the underlying trading price, the option would be considered at the money. And if the strike price of the short call is above the underlying trading price, it would be considered out of the money. Each of these three have some advantages and disadvantages. As you can see on this graphic that I created, an in the money covered call offers the most downward protection. This means an in the money covered call would be the most conservative of these three options. An out of the money covered call offers the least downward protection. However, on the flip side, the out of the money covered call offers the greatest profit potential whereas the in-the-money-covered call offers the least profit potential. The at-the-money-covered call is right in between these two. To sum things up, an in-the-money-covered call has the highest probability of profit, however the smallest profit in size. An out-of-the-money-covered call has the lowest probability of profit, but the biggest profit when it comes to size. And at the money covered call is right in between. So which of these is best really depends on your risk appetite. If you sell more than one call option you could actually also combine an in the money and an out of the money covered call to form a hybrid of these two. Now let me move on to presenting the Greeks of a covered call position. As a covered call only consists of a short call when it comes to options, we can disregard the long call, long put and short put row of this table. Furthermore, we can disregard row because it's only important for very long term options. The delta of a short call position is negative, however the delta of a long stock position is very positive. This means the net delta of a covered call position with the stock is positive. In other words, you still hope for an increase in the underlying assets price, just not an as big increase as you would without the covered call on it. Next up, Vega represents the impact of implied volatility on the position. A negative Vega means that a short call position would profit from a drop in implied volatility. So a covered call position would profit from decreasing implied volatility. This means it's best to enter a covered call position when implied volatility is high. To find out if implied volatility is high, you could use IV rank. If IV rank is over 50, implied volatility is relatively high. Theta is the Greek that represents time decay. A positive theta means that this position profits from time passing. In other words, a covered call profits every day from time passing by. The gamma of a covered call is negative. Last but not least, let me give you a few tips for trading covered calls. First of all, covered calls are a great strategy to finance your stock positions. You can do it more than once on existing stock positions. So if you don't expect a stock to increase dramatically over the next few months, you could easily sell one or multiple covered calls on it. As soon as one covered call expires, you could just sell another one. This can move your break-even point of the overall stock position down dramatically. However, it's important to have the right directional assumption. You should neither be very bullish nor bearish when trading a covered call. If you expect the underlying price to go up dramatically, don't sell a covered call on it. And if you expect the underlying price to go down, it would probably be better to sell the stock position than to sell a covered call on it. Furthermore, covered calls are a great strategy to transition from stock trading to options trading. Covered calls combine stocks and options into one strategy. The next step is to trade strategies with only options. In addition to that, it's best to trade covered calls when implied volatility is high because they profit from decreasing IV. 
So once again, covered calls are best traded when IV rank is over 50. If the underlying asset's price moves above the strike price of the short call option, the short call option will be considered in the money. If a short option is in the money, there is a risk of getting assigned. If your short call gets assigned, you will have to sell your stock for the strike price. The risk of getting assigned increases dramatically when you get closer to expiration. So if you want to decrease the risk of getting assigned, I recommend closing any in the money short call positions at least one week before expiration. Like I mentioned before, covered calls can be done on existing stock positions or as a totally new position. However, they are probably most commonly used on existing stock positions. Furthermore, make sure to take in enough credit for the sale of the call option. If you only take in a few cents of premium for the call option, the trade won't be worth it. Last but not least, I just want to say that there actually exists an opposite strategy of a covered call. It's called a covered put and it consists of a short put option and a short stock position. However, this strategy isn't nearly as commonly used as a covered call and that's also one reason why I didn't cover it in this video. As you need to buy shares of the underlying asset to trade a covered call, it is actually a quite capital intensive strategy. However, if you want to trade something very similar to a covered call that requires much less capital, I recommend checking out credit spreads. I actually have a very similar video on credit spreads, so if you want to learn more about them, make sure to check it out. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe if you enjoy content like this. See you in the next video.